Over the past month, I've been releasing my top 80 quarterbacks for the 2021 college football season. Now, making this list was really difficult as I had to take into account players that are coming off injuries, players who have transferred, potential quarterback battles, and just a whole lot more. Each week, I've been releasing 10 quarterbacks from my list. Last week, we took a look at the quarterbacks I had ranked 31 through 40, which means that this week, we're going to be taking a look at the quarterbacks that are ranked 21 through 30. Before we get to today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to the channel. If you love college football content like this, then this is definitely the place for you. Picking up our list today at number 30 is Michigan State quarterback Anthony Russo. After appearing in 27 games at Temple over the last three seasons, he's going to wrap up his collegiate career with the Spartans. Over the last three years, Russo has thrown for 6,300 yards with 44 passing touchdowns. Entering the 2020 campaign, he was named to the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm watch list. His numbers were solid, but he appeared in only three games total. Still, he threw for 900 yards with nine passing touchdowns and had two rushing touchdowns. Back in 2019, he set the school's single season record with 250 completions and third in passing touchdowns with 21 and third in passing yards with 2,900. He has 10 games in his career with at least 250 plus passing yards and 12 games with at least two passing touchdowns. Russo also has four games with at least 300 passing yards and five games with four passing touchdowns. He's now going to play in the Big Ten, where he's going to have a chance to show his talent against some of the best teams in the entire country. Up next, at number 29, we have Florida quarterback Emory Jones. After spending three seasons with the Gators, this is finally going to be his chance to be the full-time starting quarterback. Over the last three years, he's appeared in 24 total games, but only has 600 passing yards and seven passing touchdowns under his belt. He's also added 500 yards on the ground with six rushing touchdowns. Obviously, we have haven't seen much from Jones, but the potential is definitely there with him. He was the number 5 dual threat quarterback when he came out of high school for a reason. Now we're going to have a chance to see what he's able to do. His ability in the run game already makes him a massive threat. We don't have too large of a sample size in his passing game, but if he can improve on that just a little bit, he's definitely going to be solid. He has the potential to be a quarterback who throws for at least 2,000 yards and has at least 1,000 rushing yards while having 30 combined touchdowns. Again, this is just a prediction I'm making, but he's going to have to show it and prove it to us, but I think he's definitely due for a breakout season for the Gators, and I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Up next at number 28 is TCU quarterback Max Duggan. He started 9 games last year for the Horned Frogs and threw for 1,800 yards with 10 passing touchdowns and 4 interceptions. He also added more than 500 yards on the ground with 10 rushing touchdowns. He became the first quarterback to ever lead TCU in rushing yards since 1950. He also became the first TCU quarterback with multiple 100-yard rushing games in a season over the last 20 years. In his two seasons as the starter for TCU, he's thrown for just under 4,000 yards with 25 passing touchdowns. He's been not only one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the Big 12, but in all of college football. Up next at number 27 is Louisville quarterback Malik Cunningham. Over the last two seasons, Cunningham has been one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the entire country. For the Cardinals since 2019, he's thrown for nearly 5,000 yards with 42 passing touchdowns while adding 1,100 yards on the ground with 13 rushing touchdowns. Cunningham had a passing touchdown in 10 of his 11 games last season, and he threw for at least 220 yards in 7 of them. There were only 2 games last year in which he didn't have at least 2 total touchdowns. Over the last 2 seasons, he has 11 games in which he has thrown a touchdown pass and has also rushed for a touchdown. He's had six games with at least 200 passing yards and at least 50 rushing yards. Cunningham has been one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the nation over the last few years, but has been buried under some pretty bad Louisville teams. Hopefully the Cardinals are going to be solid this year so more people can have the chance to appreciate what Cunningham's been doing. Up next at number 26, we have Auburn quarterback Bo Nix. Now, for those of you who have been following my channel for some time, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Bo Nix. To put it kindly, I just think he's overhyped and not that good of a quarterback. However, I have to admit that the potential is definitely there with him. He has a chance to be a really solid quarterback. I know that, but he just hasn't met any expectations through his first two seasons at Auburn. Through his first two years with the Tigers, he's thrown for 5,000 yards with 28 passing touchdowns while adding 700 yards on the ground with 14 rushing touchdowns. Last year was an up and down season for Auburn, but I think they're going to be back to being an SEC contender this year. He was fine last year for the Tigers and he had some really good games. The only thing that I'd like to see from Bo Nix is to see him perform well against good teams. 
Last year against Alabama, he threw two interceptions with no touchdowns. Against Georgia, he threw for 170 yards with no touchdowns with an interception. Against Texas A&M, he did have two rushing touchdowns, but he didn't throw for a touchdown pass and only threw for 140 yards. If Knicks can have solid performances against good teams, then he can cement himself as one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. Until then, I don't care if he has good games against Kentucky or Arkansas. Coming in at number 25, we have Arkansas State quarterback Lane Hatcher. Over the last two seasons for the Red Wolves, he has been fantastic. In 21 games, he's thrown for over 5,000 yards with 46 passing touchdowns and only 12 interceptions. In 2020, he had 19 passing touchdowns with only two interceptions. The crazy thing is, he wasn't even their full-time starter. He split time with Logan Bonner, who actually spent more time as the quarterback. If you combine the two quarterback seasons, they threw for 3,900 yards with 37 passing touchdowns. Bonner transferred to Utah State, so this job is all Hatcher's. Hatcher was the Sunbelt Freshman of the Year back in 2019, so he's already shown that when given the full-time job as the starter, he can excel. Again, in limited action last year, he tossed 19 touchdowns. He had a game with 330 yards and 4 touchdowns, and another game with 330 yards and 5 touchdowns. The Sun Belt has some really good quarterbacks, but there's a chance that Lane Hatcher can be the best next season. Coming up next at number 24 is San Jose State quarterback Nick Starkle. After bouncing around from Texas A&M and Arkansas, it appears that he's finally found a home with the Spartans. In eight games last season, he threw for 2,200 yards with 17 passing touchdowns. He was named to the second team All-Mountain West after leading the Spartans to an undefeated regular season and their first Mountain West championship title in program history. It was also the first time they finished in the AP poll since 2012. He was named the offensive MVP of the Mountain West title game after he threw for 450 yards with three touchdowns. He was top 20 in the country in passing yards per game, was top 25 in passing efficiency, and his touchdown and passing yards ranked second in the Mountain West and were also top 30 in the country. He had a game against New Mexico on Halloween where he threw for just under 500 yards with five passing touchdowns. He became the first Spartan to ever win the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award Player of the Week honors. San Jose State came out of nowhere last season and and it was largely due to Starkle. In his final year in college, I expect him to finish his career with a bang. Coming up next at number 23, we have Texas Tech quarterback Tyler Shuck. After last season at Oregon, he opted to transfer to Texas Tech this offseason. He completed 64% of his passes for 1,600 yards and had 13 touchdowns. He also had 300 yards on the ground with a couple of rushing touchdowns. He threw for at least 200 yards in all five regular season starts and hit the 300 yard mark twice. Chuck was among the Pac-12 and FBS leaders in several offensive categories. He finished 7th in the country in passing yards per completion, 15th in passing efficiency, and he was the Pac-12 leader in all three categories and was 2nd in the league in passing touchdowns and passing yards along with points responsible for. He showed flashes of being an elite quarterback and now heads to Texas Tech where he's going to have the keys to an incredible offense. I think Shuck is going to put up some monster numbers in 2021. Up next at number 22 is a quarterback with no real experience whatsoever, Ohio State quarterback CJ Stroud. Now this one is probably the toughest out of all these rankings because uh, at the time of this video, the Buckeyes have yet to name their starting quarterback and there's a chance that it could be three different guys. But I'm going to give the edge to Stroud at the time of this recording. We've seen some incredible seasons from Ohio State quarterbacks over the decades, so I think if Stroud's the quarterback, he's going to have some monster numbers. He was one of the top quarterback recruits coming out of high school for a reason. As a senior, he threw for 3,900 yards with 47 passing touchdowns. Again, it might be bold of me to have him this high when we don't even know if he's going to be the starting quarterback, but my prediction is if he wins the job, he's going to be a Heisman candidate potentially for the Buckeyes. Finishing up our list today at number 21 is Oklahoma State quarterback Spencer Sanders. After being the Big 12 Freshman of the Year in 2019, he had a little bit of a disappointing season in 2020. Over his first two seasons for the Cowboys, he's thrown for over 4,000 yards with 30 passing touchdowns while adding 900 yards on the ground with four rushing touchdowns. His numbers did take a bit of a hit last season, but had he played a full season, he likely would have surpassed his freshman numbers, but he just didn't take the next step that I thought he would. Still, he's been a very, very good quarterback over his first two seasons for the Cowboys. In 2020, he had three really good games and the other six were just average. Against Texas, he threw for 400 yards with four passing touchdowns. Against Baylor, he had 300 150 yards and three touchdowns, and against Miami in the Cheez-It Bowl, he threw for 300 yards with four passing touchdowns, so he closed the season with a strong finish. 
Well, that wraps up this portion of my rankings for this video. What was a quarterback I mentioned in today's ranking that you thought was too high or too low? Drop a comment down below and share with me your thoughts. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be ranking my top 80 quarterbacks for the upcoming season, so stay tuned to see where your favorite quarterback falls on this list. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you're notified when I post my next video. If you love college football content like this, then this is definitely the place for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.